What is there to say about Crocodile Dundee? Well, the first movie was released in 1986, and it was a huge box office hit. It's an action comedy about an Australian bushman named Mick Crocodile Dundee. He has only ever known the expansive, sparse and extremely unforgiving landscape that is the Australian outback. He's known famously for hunting crocodiles with his bare hands. But that's nothing compared to the experience he's about to have in the energetic and chaotic pace of New York. I think everyone can remember this scene. And your wallet. Nick, give him your wallet. What for? He's got a knife. <laughs> That's not a knife. That's a knife. This film immerses you in a very funny clash of lifestyles. Our story begins with a reporter named Sue Charlton, played by Linda Kozlowski. She hears of a story about a guy who gets brutally attacked by a crocodile but barely survives with no interviews or any media coverage. So she attempts to track him down. She meets with Dundee's Bushman partner, who we find out likes to exaggerate his stories just a bit. Hundreds of miles, snake-infested swamp. On his hands and knees, he crawled right into Catherine. Straight past the hospital and into the first pub for a beer. <laughs> that story's getting better every time you tell it, Wally. <laughs> when Mick Dundee enters, we get quite an introduction. This is a brilliant lead-in for our main character. He pretends to wrestle with a stuffed crocodile, almost pointing fun at his name as a crocodile hunter. Whilst the reporter is scared shitless, the rest of the guys just indulge in the joke. It pulls you into the Australian humour very well. At first, Sue is not sure about this crazy Australian. However, Mick Dundee agrees to take the reporter to a place where he was attacked by the crocodile. During this time, we get to know our main character, with his incredible abilities to stare down giant water buffalo, scare off kangaroo poachers, and fish with a stick. Mick and Susan both fall out after Dundee tries to explain how she wouldn't survive in the bush for more than a day, being only a Sheila and all. How I'd feel if I were out here, alone. You? Out here alone? Oh, that's a joke. City girl like you? You wouldn't last five minutes, love. This is a man's country out here. That's the dangerous end. She bravely and naively decides to take the challenge only to find how true he was. This scene says it all. It's all right, Taylor. After a brief romantic period, Sue persuades Crocodile Dundee to come back to New York with her to experience life in the Big Apple. This is where the movie hits its pace. Just seeing how Dundee tries to come down the escalator, it gives us a picture of what's to come. However, we find that Sue is actually dating her work colleague. What a cock tease. Imagine flying halfway around the world, thinking this woman is interested, only to find her kissing another man as soon as she gets off the plane. But Mick deals with this and sees what New York has to offer. He's so unused to the culture that he tries to say hi to everyone. He sleeps on the floor. He takes down a thief with a can of beans. He goes to a party with Sue and unknowingly mistakes a cocaine addict for having a cold and helps him try to clear it up by pouring all his cocaine in a bowl of boiling water and putting a towel over his head. Ten minutes of that, you'll be clear as a bell, no worries. Get into it. You know, Mick, that was probably a couple hundred dollars worth of cocaine. What's that? Meanwhile, Sue is having trouble deciding between who she wants to be with. Her father owns the newspaper company and would like to see her married with Richard. Then, to her surprise, in front of all her friends and family, and Mick, she's proposed to by Richard and agrees. This makes it clear to Dundee that he's out of the picture, and he decides the next day he's going to go for a walkabout. A walkabout? Uh, that's an Aboriginal habit. It means to uh, wander around and uh, discover new places. How long were you gone? A couple of months. Try 18. Sue changes her mind, however, and realises that if she doesn't tell him, he'll be gone for good. 
She sees Mick in a ridiculously crowded station, but it's too cramped for her to reach him in time, so she has to communicate between two men. She tells him not to leave and that she loves him. This leaves us with an awesome, if maybe a little corny ending, with Mick crowd walking his way to Sue. And there you have it, our happy ending. Paul Hogan was made for the role. After all, he did write the story, much like Sylvester Stallone and Rocky. You know that there's no one else who could do the role better. With his friendly smile, great humour, and his prowess to do some extraordinary things, it's hard not to love the character and back him all the way. I think Linda Kozlowski does a great job playing the role of Sue. She's prepared to take on a challenge and doesn't come off like a girl who needs to be saved, even though it happens twice in the movie. She still knows how to shoot a gun or give a guy his just deserves. What makes this movie work is Paul Hogan. I don't think there were many movies quite like this in the 80s, and the style and pace of the movie is perfect. We get an even experience of Dundee in his element. Ah, uh, Mick. You frightened shit out of me. So I ought to, mate. Sneaking up on a man when he's rendering first aid to a lady. Uh, is that what you were doing? And out of it. The movie captures the energy and the environment brilliantly and pulls you into this world. There are no straightforward baddies in the movie, which I guess is unusual. I mean, we have the asshole pimp, Richard, who isn't really a bad guy, and of course the crocodile. So there isn't any bad force, it's just about the experience of a man out of his natural habitat. The music in this movie is really worth mentioning, as it adds so much to creating the Australian vibe with the didgeridoo and a simple but effective guitar riff. As soon as the credits start rolling, you get pumped for this movie with just the mere music alone by John Best. The way the music is incorporated so tightly with the ending gets you on the edge of your seat, wondering if Sue reaches Mick in time. I think the 80s style dancing is hard to look at without smirking, but apart from that, there's not a lot to dislike. Overall, this movie has a funny and unique story to tell with a great cast of actors. I've seen this movie so many times as a child, and on recent viewing it still keeps me engaged. It's a decent length movie with a lot to offer, and let's face it, Crocodile Dundee makes that hat and crocodile jacket look awesome. I wish I could make it work like he does. There are two sequels, Crocodile Dundee 2 and Crocodile Dundee in Los Angeles, but this is my favourite by far. We'll get to the others another time. <laughs>